our societies aren't only facing a climate emergency, many of them also face an equity emergency or several equity emergencies. These inequities look different from place to place. Gender inequity, racial and ethnic inequity, economic inequity, inequity based on disability or sexual orientation or religion. It's a large list. And of course, many of these inequities interact and intersect with each other. They also intersect with climate change. For one thing, the impacts of climate change fall disproportionately on people who are already marginalized. And climate change impacts themselves can worsen existing inequities. For instance, a study in the United States recently found that the kind of natural disasters that are made worse by climate change, like hurricanes, the recovery from those natural disasters increases inequity. It increases the racial wealth gap. In other words, the way that we're responding to climate impacts worsens inequity. And it's not just climate impacts. Climate solutions have the potential to worsen inequity. Think about all the jobs that we need to create in order to build a clean energy economy. If within our societies, those jobs fall to the people who are the most privileged, that will worsen existing inequities like gender inequity, racial inequity, economic inequity. And that's really concerning to see all the ways in which our response to climate change could work against our goal of building more equitable societies. But here's the good news. Those same linkages between climate and equity that present a problem, those same linkages that allow climate to make equity worse, those could operate the other way. The way we address climate change could improve our situation with regard to equity. Since we have to change so much about our world to address the climate crisis, we could choose to do it in a way that increases equity. That's one of the promises of multi-solving. Each step we take to adapt to, to cope with, and to prevent climate change could also make our societies more equitable. To take a multi-solving approach means responding to climate change in a way that solves other problems too. Almost every climate action can be taken in a way that makes society more equitable. Almost every climate action can be multi-solving. Take solar microgrids. This is a way to give communities that don't have access to the traditional electricity grid clean electricity. That's a way to improve economic equity, economic opportunity. Or think about energy efficiency, particularly when it's targeted toward communities that have historically been marginalized. That's a way to address climate change while also improving equity. Or think about transportation solutions like public transportation or cycling infrastructure. If those are designed to improve access for communities that have been marginalized, that's an equity solution and a climate solution. And if it's done in a way to prevent green gentrification and displacement, then you truly are addressing climate and equity at the same time. To multi-solve, you need to bring multiple perspectives, skills, and interests together. Of course, you need people with knowledge of climate solutions, solar experts, transportation planners, and the like. But you also need people who represent the groups who have received inequitable treatment in the past. If it's going to benefit women, your transportation plan should have women's input as decision makers about the needs and hopes and priorities for the project. If your city's home energy efficiency plan is meant to help senior citizens who are living on a fixed income, then those folks should be part of the decision making body to design the project. That's because equity doesn't happen by accident. It must be designed for. A good principle to remember is no decisions about us without us. If you keep that in mind in your climate solutions, you'll be well on your way to multi-solving. Every climate action, large or small, is an opportunity to improve equity. Because climate touches so much, it touches urban design and transportation and energy systems and agriculture and forestry. In each of those places it touches, at each level, is an opportunity to address equity. For each of those places, asking how will the benefits and the burdens be equitably shared is an excellent starting point. And that's a question we will need to ask again and again and again to make sure that the way we address climate change helps create a more equitable world in the process.